Guns are intensely political. White dominated, right wing firearms apparatus, it doesn't make them feel safer for us to have guns. Why do you think they think you're radical? Because he looks like this. Yeah. And I look like this. <laughs> it creates a different balance of power. Gun sales in America reached record highs at the beginning of the pandemic and have continued after ongoing political and racial violence across the country has led more Americans to question their own safety. For Brute, I'm taking you to Houston, Texas to meet up with Flight Risk, the founder of Arm Your Friends, a growing leftist and BIPOC gun organization that is training underserved communities how to use firearms. One reason why most of our team, we go by call signs on the internet and we made up our goofy nicknames is because most of us have careers that are, aren't related to firearms or self-defense or anything political at all. We have to like make sure that we're at least a little bit insulated uh, and that our identities are protected just to you know, keep our loved ones safe, keep our places of work you know, out of all this. Uh, because what seems normal to us Simply being like a person of color in the ways that you choose to interact with the world is inherently political. Much better. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm toast if anyone related to my job like sees this. I need to be careful because everything that we say is on the record. <laughs> Remember, stay in flight, be gay, do crimes. It's the motto. Got the Arm Your Friends Medusa head patch on the kit, as well as the Clan Buster patch. Just so people know what I'm about. Y'all ready to roll? What you see there is a Punisher skull uh, in the American flag theme, which is kind of a symbol of, uh, I guess, right wing militancy. Um, of course, any symbol means a lot of things to a lot of people, but it's kind of been co-opted as a right-wing symbol. Oh, nice. We like to talk about ourselves as being like the future of the gun culture. I thought Armor Friends would be a good way to like really serve as a bridge for everyone who is turned off by like the ultra right-leaning super Republican, like NRA dominated conversation about like firearms. Look at this guy, he's so cute. There's like a big dog. We're out here at the shooting range and they're just getting started with their training. Flight said the owner told him that Yesterday they got two calls telling them not to let Arm Your Friends train here because they were too radical and that they were extremist. They told me about it today saying, hey, y'all better go watch your backs. There's some people trying to cancel your events. Like knowing that we live in people's heads, like rent free, like you get to live there. The more people like react to what you're doing, it means you're having an impact like, and you're inspiring people to care about what you're doing one way or the other. Why do you think they think you're radical? I feel like, because he looks like this. Yeah. And I look like this. We're working at <laughs> I feel like people are afraid of what they don't understand. And we target people who the farms industry community world is trying to keep out. So when we're removing those barriers, we're like changing what their world looks like. And suddenly that's a problem. Like more black people getting involved, more Asian people getting involved, Hispanics, Latinos, people with like left to center political views where people just view current issues differently than the monolith of the firearms industry. And our mission of like bringing those people in, like if that's extreme to you, you're, you're not ready for the future because this is what the future looks like. Yep. Absolutely. Because people like this have always existed and they've wanted to become uh, trained 
take charge of their self-defense, but the industry has left them out of the conversation. Right. And suddenly now we want to provide a space for them to be a part of that. Suddenly that's a problem somehow. Yeah. Why is that a problem? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, a problem we have had in the past is um, there's been calls to uh, report the firearms that we own legally as stolen to try to get us in trouble with law enforcement. So <laughs> we tried our best to uh, not show our gun serial numbers so that apples on the internet don't mark it as stolen or report it as stolen. <laughs> Safety is going to be priority number one here. We are doing some janky hood rat stuff out here today. So we'll make sure that no one leaves with any holes that they did not arrive with. Cool? All right, eyes and ears, everyone, eyes and ears. You on the fourth one? Yes, sir. Send them. I bought my first firearm uh, three years ago. I realized I wanted to, you know, be in control of my own self-defense and make sure I could protect myself. We came up with the idea of turning it into a group uh, during the protest during summer of 2020. George Floyd being from Houston. Houston had a huge turnout for his memorial protests and celebrations of life here in the city. But where you saw HPD come out the strongest was with rubber bullets, uh, crowd control, getting people off the street with horses. And that was like a really radicalizing moment for Arm Your Friends. You have no power to tell them to do anything, yet their badges will say to protect and serve you. But it's really protect and serve who? Are you carrying right now? Uh, no. I'm not carrying right now because I don't want trouble with the police. It's not, it's not worth it on a Sunday. But I will be carrying as soon as this interview's over. Flight risk is open to some gun regulations, but he believes that people have the right to defend themselves. He feels that there will always be guns in America, and so for him, that means buying guns and learning to use them is the safer bet. Are we more safe with more people being armed? Yes. So we're more safe with more people being armed because it creates a different balance of power. So the conversation about firearms will never be a conversation of should there be guns. The debate that we have about gun control is who will have the guns? If you have enough money, all this stuff becomes available to you. So the government, rich people, the elites will always have guns. The right of self-defense is something that should be expanded to people, everyday people, working class people. Does that have a safety at all? Uh, no. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> to be honest, before 2020, I was pretty much anti-gun. You know, every every time there's like a school shooting or something, I'm like, oh man, what if we like just didn't have guns at all in this country? I kind of like turned around on that. I thought that, you know, uh, there's always going to be somebody out there that's armed and it would be good to also be armed. What miss? Hey, three hits is still progress. Since January 6th, I kind of had an increased interest in finding out like where the right wing is going in the country. Project Cerberus was started to document and store information and publicly accessible data about far right wing and right wing hate groups so that we can let members of our community and aligned groups know who's out there know the language that they're using and know what they're doing. This is a picture that was publicly posted on their Instagram account. Um, this patch is what's called a Totenkampf, which is the actual symbol of the 3rd Panzer Division um, of the SS. So these are Nazi Special Forces uh, soldiers from World War II. That's the symbol they used being worn on 
and publicly displayed on people who claim to be active duty law enforcement, um, active duty special operations, and these people are out in the world providing training to people. They try to defend themselves and say that, oh, it's not a Nazi symbol, but it's important to understand that when you catch people doing right-wing things and Nazi things, that they will find a way to massage it. But if you go Google a Totenkopf yourself, you can be the judge of what that symbol is. Seeing other groups doing stuff like this, it's a reminder that history is not over. And all I know is that I don't want to face it alone. So knowing that there are people out there who think like that, who feel like that, who would think of me in this way, I just want to make sure that I'm backing up my friends, I'm making my friends safer, and that they're making me safer. Yo. Yo, what's up, my boy? No, I just, I was just wondering if you were, uh, if you were still good for this shit. Yeah, bro. Uh, I'm gonna be a little late because I'm, uh, I'm about to get right now. I'll be there, bro. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, I'll be there soon, uh, and I'll just see you when you get in. Actually, I'm not gonna name this one because this is my beginner rifle. Yeah. Still, I feel like I just like to learn on a beginner rifle. But my next one, yeah, gonna get it like silver chromed out. I'll give that one a name. Make sure that the slide goes forward. We're gonna push down on this mechanism here with our thumbs. So push, yeah, that's how you lock the slide forward. You're gonna keep your hand pushed all the way up into this lip here. And to get around into the chamber, you'll pull back on the optic. So release that again, like here. Cool. Nice. Dude, you got the hang of it. Oh, nice. Man. Appreciate it, Look at this. Education. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> they always smile right after, like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> it's, like <typing> a key. <laughs> it's like typing a key. Yeah. Yeah. This was, like, the first time I've gone to a range and, like, not had a second thought. But, like, I'm trans, so I was a girl until six months ago. I was a brown girl in Texas trying to go to a, oh, yeah. a gun range. It's knowing that there are other people who are capable of ensuring your safety with you in a broader sense. Exactly, someone's following you home. Someone's road raging behind you, following you home. Yeah. Instead of stopping, instead of panicking, you drive to the nearest person in your network right, yeah. right, right. and they have your back. That's, that's what like, makes you right. safer, even on the days where you're not caring, you don't feel like caring. You're going to some place where it's just not right to carry. A lot of trans women were being murdered in 2020 and the number is even higher this year. When someone is at a bar and hitting on them but you feel like it's really uncomfortable and they're probably picking up on the fact that you're trans, you call me before something gets bad. Because you can't call the cops at that point because what are you calling them for? I think this guy's going to get violent when he realizes that I have a penis. Like, that's a conversation that cops don't want to have either, right. you know? Like, that's something that they get incredibly uncomfortable about. That's something that they could hurt someone for. This is something that I actually do need to learn about, you know? It's like, we're getting to that stage in life where it's like, I want to be safer, I want to be able to protect my friends, I want to be able to have some knowledge where I can use these skills if I need to, if that situation arises. So, yeah, it worked out pretty well. It was a great experience. Thank you for having me out here, man. Yeah, it means absolutely. a lot to me. Yeah. For sure. We're going to get, get this time, locked man. in. Easy. Get some rest. Yeah. Please. For sure. We're going the same way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Good to see you again. Bye. We don't make lightly of the ability to, you know, injure other people. And we don't talk about life as if it has no meaning. We always remind people that it should be a last line of defense. It's such like a somber decision. 